Hello, welcome to another edition of Ted's Tiny Trucks. We've got another unboxing video today due to um, an unscheduled eBay purchase this week. So, to cut a long story short, when I bought my MCA, or just prior to that, I joined one of the Cross RC groups on Facebook. Uh, and a chap on there had posted a really nice picture, or a couple of pictures actually, of a, of a GC4, which is a, a just a standard four wheel truck. And it was a nice blend of military paint with civilian wheels and I quite liked it so I've got to be honest I'd put it on my oh, maybe one day list uh, and I'd figured I'd just crack on with the MCA and actually get round to finishing the current project which is my RC four wheel drive Marlin. Anyway, a bit of idle surfing on eBay uh, and it turns out that I found a GC4 kit at a good price together with the conversion kit and maybe the GC4M. And a, I can't say it was a problem, but this came in at under half price at 65 quid on the bid, and the truck itself came in at 275, as opposed to normally about 435. It is second hand, it has been started, so there's an element of risk attached to it. You never really know what you're going to get when you buy things second hand off eBay. According to the you know the eBay item description. It's had the axles primed and painted. So we could go one of two ways, well, we could go one of three ways here, really, couldn't we? You know, Best case is, axles have been nicely stripped down, primed, painted, put back together again. Nothing else in the kit has been touched. It's absolutely bob on. Worst case, maybe just pick the axles up, shot them with a can of primer, shot them with a can of black, screw heads and hex heads are just filled up dog bones and everything else are slightly knackered, covered in paint, so the whole thing needs stripping down. And potentially you could have had a rummage around in all the boxes, in all the bags I should say, so everything's sort of mixed up. I'm hoping really for the top end or maybe something in the middle, but we'll have to see how we get on with that. So, it is very good. It did package stuff up nicely, so hopefully I can just cut through the paper. Please report it's the box with the spelling mistake on the front. Right, so it is, if you can see that, it is apparently a one tenth sackle four by four. Whatever the hell sackle means these days. It's a nice box actually. Weighs about five kilos, I would assume. So, okay, usual sticker sheet of very little interest given how glossy it is. Oh, we might be lucky, boys. We might be lucky. All looking pretty sealed. No faffing. Awesome. Right. Have a quick squint at the axles, as that's where that's where all the potential problems lie. Oh, we might get away with it. We might get away with it. Shot black. It's been masked up properly anyway, so the axles themselves look okay. The rear one does. Let's have a quick look at the front one. Okay, no. You'll probably live with that, you know. Can't see much paint on I me. Mean, can I get excuse the light? Let's have a quick screen. Uh, there's a bit of primer on the Yeah, I think I spy a bit of a bit of cleaning up to come on that. But actually, that's not as bad as it could have been. Awesome. Alright. So that keep me quiet for a bit longer. So the original plan, having seen the post on Facebook, was to copy the whole military stroke civilian 
usage type thing uh, and I want to tie it in with a similar approach to the one I'm taking on the MC8 so I want a combination of open bed so oops, move everything around again so the open bed like the standard kit comes with with sides and what have you and I want to be able to easily swap that for the radio cab bed that we have on here so I'm thinking colour scheme wise at the moment I'd like to do sort of a dark blue I think these are built from steel or the cabs so they're giving me the opportunity to do some rust and some weathering uh, I think I'm going to use the hairspray method and my original idea was to use a set of these Evo Aegis high mass steel beadlock wheels from Boom Racing now these came with a set of tyres as I bought some Boom Racing tyres and they were basically they just happened to be mounted to these wheels but having measured or seen how shallow the hex is on the back I'm a bit worried that the offset is going to be a bit crazy so I'd rather have the disadvantage of actually sticking the wheels out much further than intended oh yeah look there's a huge difference between the depth between the rear face of the wheel and the mounting face of the hex between the two of these so I'm not sure that's going to work. I'll have to find out how how much further out they'll stick. They're quite nice though, aren't they? It's a shame that, well, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's a shame they're white or not. I mean, if I keep them, they'll go fairly well with dark blue, particularly if they've been dirtied up and rusted a bit, and they'll match the original set for the MC8. Although there is a replacement set of wheels and tyres coming for the MC8, just something a bit more aggressive. So having watched uh, Ant RC again and their change of, of tyres to something that works better on muddy, well in mud conditions rather than rock, which to be honest is probably what's going to be 80% of my cooling is probably going to be mud based now. Uh, I think that's probably a good idea to get replacements. Be interesting to see how these go. They are a different tyre pattern. To the military one. So the military spec wheel tire. This one on the left as opposed to what we'll call the civilian spec on the right there. So wheel faces are different as well. I have to say I prefer the detail on the on the civilian one to be honest. That looks much nicer. Right, let's have a quick squint through everything else while we've got the box open. I'm also pleased to report I've upgraded to a 4G mobile broadband as my previous broadband, well we'll call it narrowband if we're being honest. You know, we're talking a six minute video was an hour upload, you know, sort of a 15 minute video was hitting an hour and 75. Hour and 75, hour and 45, it was just crazy. Right. Slightly more sensible length chassis rails this time round. Uh, feel like aluminium, feel light enough. In mean, length terms, so yeah, not hugely different against uh, a Marlin or a Trailfinder 2, which is probably going to put them actually slightly shorter than uh, an SCX 10 2 kit, which actually makes it a little bit more manageable uh, in the MCO. No, that's fun, a little bit smaller. In fact, I did want to have a look at the cab. for a one piece that just fantastic plenty of detail very little mucking around with doors or anything else to do actually that's really quite nice so, I mean you can power some size wise given that they're both nominally one tenth scale I think it's going to be pretty big should look quite nice and imposing to be honest And interior-wise, well, again, easy paint, easy fiddle, not too much grief. And that sits, uh, that sits nicely in there. So yeah, okay, wicked. Not too difficult to paint or tweak them. In there. 